Okay, everybody, we're going to review the uh, interface between the new PTS 900 system and the Dactronics scoring system. You can see here we have the base station, the all, an AllSport 5000 controller, and the Dactronics character generator, which we will probably refer to as the CG for the rest of the broadcast. If you're not sure about where your CG is, if you used, for example, DV Sports, you probably have a CG living with that kit because you've been using it to support the timestamp on that video feed. So we're going to ask you to find that and hopefully you'll be able to share the signal coming out of the CG to still support DV Sports and also to support the data side of the base station. So starting with the primary connection to start and stop the game clock, let me just review here on the back of the AllSport 5000. We're going to plug in to the main clock switch. So we want to make sure we don't confuse that with the shot clock switch. So this part should be exactly the same in the fact that we're going to take our uh, satin cable, plug into the J4 port, and on the back of the Precision Time Base Station, you, it's now labeled as port 3. So, but it's the, it's the RJ11 port. Now, be careful to not plug into the remote port, which I will discuss here uh, later on. So make sure it's port 3 into the main clock switch, and then check to make sure that the clock is toggling correctly. So here, if you want to see, I'm hitting green, and time is starting on the clock. I hit red, then stop clock, uh, time stops, and then you also want to hit the horn. And also, after testing start and stop, also hit the horn button and make sure it is setting off the horn. Or in the case if you're in the office and don't have the full arena set up, if you hit the horn button, notice that the arrow uh, in the upper right hand corner of the screen flashes and the, and the all sport beeps. And so that confirms that your horn connection is good. Note that if you do not have a six pin cable, if you're only using four pins, the horn button will not be supported. So that's why you want to make sure you have a six pin cable. Okay, now as far as the secondary connection, which is going to be new for, for most of you if you haven't used the PTS 900 before, um, we have here a character generator. So it needs uh, two connections. It needs the data in. So you can see here, data is the in port from the AllSport 5000. So here's the cable. Um, we'll just plug this in. And then the control port is the data out, which will then support both DV Sports and ourselves. So using the Y cable that we sent with you, we get this set up here. And for the first thing you want to do is as you're plugging in the data port, make sure you're seeing the, the timestamp on the CG so you know you're getting data in. And then with Dactronics, we're going to take one of the Y ends, and if you notice here, we have the no modem adapter on it. And that's important because we actually need to switch the pins so we see the signal. And we're going to be plugging into the COM1 port with the no modem adapter wow, this thing's... and so now when we hit start and stop you notice we're seeing the time values now on the screen so we're seeing every clock event start and stop okay the other end of the Y cable can then be used to support DV Sports or for say broadcast or anybody else that needs that timestamp value um, in the uh, for their feet. Now the one other thing I'll mention here, if you have Dactronics, I know that a lot of uh, game clock operators prefer the remote hand switch as opposed to hitting the buttons. This is not necessarily a recommended procedure, but we did put in the port to make the hand switch option available for Dactronics. So again, make sure we're using the remote port for the hand switch and then you can check the connections. You can see now when I hit start, clock starts, stop, and you can check the horn button as well to make sure that everything is working. 
please keep in mind that if for some reason with the hand switch you can get the hand switch out of sync with the base station so for example if you have an inadvertent stop where the referee is talking to the players and they stop the clock to get the clock restarted you're actually going to have to toggle the switch off and back on to get everything back online so that's why our recommendation has always been to use uh, the buttons on the base station but again I don't want to take a timekeeper out of their comfort zone if they're used to using this hand switch uh, for 20 years running the game clock. For any additional questions about the contents of this presentation, please use the contact information shown above. We thank you again for your support of Precision Time.